The sky suddenly rained sharks. Countless sharks screamed and hit the ground hard. The crowd saw this scene all frouncing. They grabbed their 10-foot shovels. They pulled out their sharp knives and rushed into the street screaming. A man wielded a knife and sliced out raw fish. A girl sticks a shark in a baseball bat. Others sprinkle spices on the grill and start cooking. Some even pulled out their assault rifles and sprayed the sharks wildly. Where did these sharks come from? A day ago, this man turned his head to look out of the cabin but rubbed his eyes in disbelief. There was a shark on the wing of the plane. At the same time, the plane hit turbulence. The side cabin door fell right out. The pilot was barely able to control the plane. The co-pilot let out a shriek. A shark breaks through the windshield and bites her. The pilot panics and tries to pull her out. The result is that the two of them disappear into the air together. That's when Finn, the main character of the film, comes into the picture. After finding out that both pilots are dead, he struggles to get to the cockpit followed by his wife April. But as she reaches the hatch, she is sucked out of the plane. Luckily, she held onto a rope and didn't fall off. A shark tried to jump on her, then she took a gun that someone threw at her. But the gun and her hand were bitten by the shark. In the cockpit, Finn struggled to hold on to the controls, and then made a shocking landing on the runway. After the plane landed, Finn told the reporters over and over that there were sharks flying in the sky. But no one believed him. He then followed April to the hospital. This time the two of them came to New York, because they had an appointment with Finn's sister Ellen's family. Ellen was visiting the Statue of Liberty. Ellen's husband and her friend Sky were watching a baseball game. After learning of Sharknado's presence, Ellen rushed to call Finn and said that her husband and friends were still at the stadium. She asked Finn to go and get them. Then they embarked on the cruise back. The sky was dark and cloudy. Finn is sitting in the cab to the gym. The radio was following the weather in real time. A huge Arctic cold front was approaching New York. They've just had a hot summer and it's snowing in June. Tornadoes to the north, Sharknado to the south. The driver, instead of being nervous, kept joking with him. He even gave Finn a business card and said he was ready to help if Finn needed it. Finn ran all the way to the stands and found his brother-in-law and the others. His brother-in-law didn't want to leave because the game was in the middle of the action. But the clouds in the sky were getting thicker and thicker. People in the stands were getting up. They could already see the Sharknado coming. So they panicked and ran out of order. Finn, they grabbed a baseball bat and ran to the subway station. That's when the cruise ship Ellen was undocked. A man turns around to pick up his bag and gives his life to a grown man. The huge destructive power will destroy everyone. The Statue of Liberty actually also broke off. Three women running in front. A big head of Lady Liberty rolled in the back. I find this image so outrageous that it's hilarious. Halfway through, Ellen grabbed a garbage truck. As she twisted the steering wheel, the car hit a pole on the side of the road. They were lucky to pass by the head of Lady Liberty on the wrong side. As a tornado approaches, the workers were about to close the gates of the subway. One of the workers, however, felt something swim by. He didn't care that something was wrong. The next second, inside the water, there were countless sharks swimming with their mouths wide open. Another person was scared and desperately tried to escape, but did not avoid becoming the shark's lunch. The water was pouring out in a torrent. Fane, who was standing on the subway, heard the sound and his expression instantly sank. He told people to run to the front of the car. The door of the end car was soon unstoppable. One shark after another jumped onto the subway car. By the time they reached the next platform, the subway was whizzing by without a thought of stopping. Someone had the bright idea of pushing the emergency brake to stop the subway. Finn let the people go first. He was behind to deal with the sharks. Just as people were retreating, he fought with a baseball bat and a large shark. After they managed to escape from the dangerous subway station, Finn was still being bitten by a small shark on his thigh. The group exited the station and saw the driver Finn had been joking with earlier. Finn was looking for a store to buy a chainsaw and other tools because he had to make his own bomb. The cab circled around the city without seeing a single hardware store open. By this time, the shark Sharknados were approaching the city. Finn and the others drove to Times Square. At a pizza place, Finn asked for some propane. At first, the owner refused to sell it to him. And then... The sharks were still too scary. The owner still agreed to give the man propane. Finn even grabbed the statue in front of the store to use as a weapon. They were going back to the hotel which was the second tallest building in New York. They could have blown up Sharknado on the rooftop of the hotel, but events did not rhyme as one had thought. 
The car couldn't move because of the water flowing into the street. The driver contributed a rope. Finn tossed the rope over a bar. The others grabbed the rope and swung one by one to the other side. Only the driver was afraid to push for fear of being bitten by a shark and falling underwater. Soon the rope broke. Finn crossed the road as lightly as a dragonfly on the surface of the water. He stepped on the heads of the sharks and jumped to the dry. They ran all the way back to the hotel. Soon after, Alan arrived at the hotel on her bicycle. Except for April, who was in the hospital, they were finally reunited as a family. This man put the bombs on a slingshot. Then one by one, he launched the bombs into the air. The bombs exploded in the shark nados with many sparks. Then he quickly made a super bomb and threw it into the air. The original sharks turned into flaming sharks. They rushed down the stairs, but halfway down, they meet up with Ellen's family in a small hallway. It turns out that the water on the ground is coming up the stairs. There are flaming sharks above them and water sharks below them. What do they do now? Finn and his brother-in-law lure the sharks to the other side and manage to get the axe from the stairwell. They use the axe to break open the fire escape door and then follow the stairs to escape from the hotel. A fire truck is parked outside the door and April is sitting on it, smiling happily. It turns out, she was worried about Finn getting hurt and snuck out of the hospital. They drove the fire truck all the way to City Hall and met the mayor. The mayor told them that if the tornado and shark not emerged, the consequences would be unthinkable. Finn said that this time the shark auto couldn't be blown away by a bomb, so he wanted to use coolant to freeze the sharks to death through the lightning rod. Uh, this idea is really amazing. If a shark can't get you over the hump, you let him live in the agony of fire and ice. Finn and his friends I went up to the rooftop. Sky put a lot of wires together. She was afraid the threads would break, so she kept tugging on them. By now Sharknado and the tornado had arrived in front of the citizens. At the moment when they were about to merge, Finn turned on the power, and instantly, lightning and thunder made a loud noise. The two people on the rooftop were swept into the air. After a burst, Sharknado disappeared. One shark after another fell from the sky. People are flocking to the sharks with weapons to vent their anger. And Finn managed to land on the rooftop of the building with a shark in the air and embraced his wife. The public continues to punish the sharks for causing havoc. Sharknado 2 was released in 2014. Some say the director miraculously turned a sci-fi thriller into a black comedy. Indeed, the film's plot is so inventive, whether it's the sharks flying in the sky, or the coolant used to destroy the Sharknado. It's all pretty amazing. The movie even created a new concept called Sharknado Falling. These things can be convinced that it is real. And after watching it, we feel incredible. At the end of the movie, only Finn appears on the rooftop. They forgot that Sky was still tugging on the wire and didn't come out. It seems to be a setup for Sharknado's third film. Can you guess if the third movie will be a serious sci-fi or a creative comedy as usual?